Here is the story of a man who defied the odds to build a pension empire straight out of a garage. A man who once paid 500 Kenya shillings for rent. Today, he has over 150 people on his monthly payroll. There's not many people who approach their bosses and ask them to retire so they can start a business together or take the risk of informing their bosses that they are interviewing for a position in a rival company. When it comes to writing a different narrative, Fred Waswa has done just that. But he never did it alone. Despite losing his dad while he was still young, his wife and children have been a strong support system. He's loving, he's caring, he, he just has his heart out for you, for um, me as a son anyway, for us as his children, um, for the office, for his work. He's just passion, passion all through. All my holidays, um, between school, I used to come and work in the office. And it's been an interesting time because he's very chilled and laid back. Um, people would think he'd be very strict and insist, oh, you have to be, you know, do this and do that. But it's been such an interesting experience working with him. I don't think there's a huge difference between him being dad the CEO and dad the dad. Um, he, the one interesting thing is we all talk English. So normally when I meet up with him and my friends, they're like, oh, you speak in English with your dad. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the language you used to communicate with. So um, I... That's, that's what we normally do. And it's very interesting because then we, it's very easy to communicate with him. He's very easy to talk to. Watch to find out how Fred Waswa rose to become the Group MD Octagon Africa. Hello everybody and welcome to Top Job with me, Mwenesi Musalia. Today we're talking about pensions and why it's important to save for your retirement. I am in the lovely home of Fred Waswa, Managing Director and Founder of Octagon Africa. And uh, you know, today I'm feeling uh, super special. Thank you so much for having me, Fred. Karibu sana. Yeah? Karibu. Good, Karibu good sana. stuff. Yeah. Karibu sana. Good. So yeah. we're going to talk about uh, pensions today, but yeah. uh, for those who don't know what exactly a pension is, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about um, that aspect? Um, a, a pension, you know, usually when you talk to to older people about pension, they understand it very quickly because it's, an, it's a monthly income they get from, the, <laughs> from, from wherever they work. So older people know what pension is about. That's right, yes. that's right. But the younger people don't even understand what you're talking about when you talk about pension. Yes. But ideally, pension is, um, is uh, a saving. It's a, it's a saving that one creates over time as they work so that at normal retirement age, then they're able to um, uh, turn back on that very saving to get um, a regular income in retirement. Because at the end of the day, when you are working for, th you've worked for 35 years, uh, it, when you retire, really, you don't have enough energy to work again to be able to get money. And therefore, you need something to live on because you won't, you won't die when you retire. You have to live another maybe 30, 40 years to go in <laughs> retirement. <laughs> and, and yet, you need money too. So you need to save to create a fund so that at normal retirement age, you turn back to that fund, it gives you a regular income, what, what's what we call a pension. Now Absolutely. tell me, Fred, because yes. you obviously seem to have a knowledge mm. of this. Mm. Did you always have this growing up? Did you have this idea that you would save and whatnot? Tell me a little bit about growing up, where you where you were born, how you were raised and so on. Uh, okay, um, I was born in Bungoma County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, in, uh, I grew up in Bumula, in Bumula Sub County. Um, I, I went to school, primary school in mm -hmm. Kimatuni RC primary school, mm -hmm. and went to secondary school in French school Kamsinga. Uh, very, yes, very, yes, very yes, school. yes, very popular yes. school. Uh, and then I did quite well, and then went to Maseno High School uh, in my elevos. Um, and uh, then I, when I finished Maseno High School, and that's how I started my, that's how the, the of course, in, when in Maseno High School, I, I was having a teacher who was called, uh, who was, who was uh, a Canadian, Canadian, Canadian uh, mathematics teacher. And in Form 5, end of Form 5, he comes to me and tells me, look, you are very good in maths. Can you be able to try something called actuarial science exams? So I asked him, what does that mean? What, is, what does it mean? He said, it's something about uh, finance, you know, things to do with the mathematics of finance. So I said, oh, I can try it. And uh, he said, I said, I don't, I don't have money. My father died uh, when I was about 14 years old. Okay. And in LF, I actually used to, I used to, I used to bursary to be able to learn. The whole school gave me a bursary. So I couldn't afford anything. So my, my teacher said, I'll pay for you. So he paid for me for the American wow. Society of uh, actual, actual Exams. I did, I did it for the first exam and I passed. 
in April in 1985. And, um, and then he tells me, when you go to university, make sure you, you do the rest of exam services. When I, when I get money, I'll be able to do that. So when I finished my A-level in 1985, the first place to do was, the first thing, of course, those days you could stay at home for two years before you go to university. Uh, so what we did, what I did, I got a place to teach. And I was getting a salary of 1,300 Kenya shillings per month. As a teacher? As a teacher. What were you teaching? Well, I was teaching mathematics and chemistry. Okay. Yes, I was math and chemistry. Uh, in a school called Kimabole, the second school in Mount Elgon. Mount Elgon. So uh, I, what I used to do is that every time I'll come back home, yeah, at the end of the month, I'll give my mother 300 Kenya, Kenya shillings to keep for me. Of the 1300? Yeah. Of the 1300. 300 Kenya shillings to keep for me. And then, of course, I'll do some shopping for the rest of the money. And when I, when I was going to NYS in 1987, when I was going to NYS for, for the program that we used to go through NYS before I got to university, my mother gave me 4,500 shillings out of the savings that I had, I had, I had saved. That's when I realized saving is, is, is important. That when you put only 300 Kenya shillings are, are all, all along, and it actually earns, some, earns you some income, and then at the end I get some money, so that's the money I went to use uh -huh. to, when I was going so to NYS. that culture of saving, that yes. culture of putting money aside, of yes. thinking about the future, is something that was bred in very early on. Absolutely, right. abso absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And that, that has, I, you know, basically it it's became something that in my heart I would want to do every day. If and when I went to university, we're getting a boom of 4,500 or something like that. Yeah. Ah, the good old days of Yeah, boom. the good old days of we, boom. <laughs> uh, uh, Some <laughs> of us who are not that young but not that old, we remember those days. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. When university was university. Yes. yes, yes. And so that boom, it, you know, what I would, first of all, I, I well, I, please maybe, explain what boom is for those who don't know what boom is. Boom is, uh, is an allowance that government, government will give students, you know, for every semester to use, you know, for, and by then. The government would give you an allowance. An allowance, yes, an allowance just for you to use. But then they have given you lunch, they have given you breakfast, they have given you dinner, and the lunch was, a, the, you know, breakfast was a two course, three course, three course lunch. In fact, I think we're going yeah, to deal yeah, with yeah, this. We need to deal with this one. We need to deal with this one. <laughs> yes, but yes. continue, yeah, so yes, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, yes. Very, I'm very yes. interested. So, you, so yeah. you, you went to university and yes. you managed now to get into actuarial science. Yes. So, so I went to university mm. and I did Bachelor of Science uh, uh, Mathematics. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, when I was doing A-level, my, my desire was to do agriculture. Uh -huh. Yeah, was at my culture. So, but when my, my math teacher told me I'm very good in maths, I was wondering, well, I'm just good in maths now, but I want to be agriculture. But then I, I didn't get a, a principal in, in biology. I got two principals with the two types of surgeries. So what I decided to do was to go to university and do uh, Bachelor of Science, um, uh, 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 general mathematics. So in third year, when we, we graduated in 1990 from the university. And in 1990, as we were graduating, the Professor George Saitoti, the Minister for Finance, mm -hmm. announces and says every university, every uh, insurance company should have, should employ an actuarial trainee. Aha. So it clicked my mind about the training, the, co the, the exams I did in 1985. To that, I said, oh, this is the actuarial work out here to be done. Here we go. Yeah, so here we go. I applied and got a job in Pioneer Insurance as an actuarial trainee. In, 19, in 1991, January, that's when I started my, my program in 1991, January. I want, us, I want us to to pause so that you can tell me, uh, we can have a little bit of, of, of breakfast. Of breakfast. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah please well. welcome, welcome. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll serve you a bit. Thank you so much. Yeah. Is that something that that young people think about? That at some point you need to start, you need to be putting money aside. At what age would you advise young people to start putting money aside? Because we sit here and we're thinking we're going to work forever, mm -hmm. yeah, and yes. and that our bodies are going to be this strong, we're going to be this productive into our seventies and our eighties. Absolutely, young people, that um, saving is supposed to start from the first day you start working. So day one, when you get your first when paycheck. When you get your first paycheck, make sure you put aside some money, because that first of all will create a culture. And, and you know money, you know money, once money you get used to it, uh, you know, it, it disappears. So if you want to save it, it's not there. But mm -hmm. once you save it, then you, the, the one remaining with becomes what you use. And it becomes a culture, and it becomes a, 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 you know, a, 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 something that you want to do on a monthly basis. So it should start from day one. Is it just about saving or is it about putting money somewhere that it can actually do something? What happens is that you don't just put money in, in, in a box somewhere. Because so I was money going to say, why can't I just put my money in a mattress? In a mattress and then you keep it, yeah. 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 What happens is that that money is eaten by inflation. You know, okay. inflation is that the money you had today, if you have a 200 shillings today, Tomorrow when you wake up in the morning, you don't have 200 shillings. You have 200 shillings, less inflation of about 5%. 
So you every day that money is going down. It's going down. It's going down. So what you need to do is to put in a place where that 200 shillings gives you another income of about 10%. So next day you have 220. Uh -huh. So inflation is 5. You have 200 and 205. Uh -huh. So that's what you guys do. Is you, that's you right. make sure that if I have 500 bob today Absolutely. and I give it to Octagon, yes. Octagon will make sure that that 500 is still worth the equivalent of 500 in the future. And even when I now retire, I can pay myself a small salary. Abs right. Absolutely. Welcome back to Top Job with me, Wenesi Musalia. How do you how do you get the confidence mm. to go? First of all, it means that you must have a very good relationship with your boss, or you're used to hanging around them. Mm. Is that something that you can say that you had, or was it just a spur of the moment where you just said, "Dear God, let me try this thing and see what happens." There are, there are bosses who are very good, yeah, but they may not be p people that can open up to coach or open up to mentor or mm -hmm. things like that. You, as an employee, you must design methods of how to get what you want from that boss. I see. You get it. You must start saying, how do I become friends? Because when you become a friend, then you, he will open up, he will start talking, he will start opening up, he will start telling you what he does, and you start learning mm -hmm. how to succeed. Because your boss is your first person you're looking forward mm -hmm. to, to be. You know, you get what I'm saying? And that's what I have done all through. In, in, for example, in Minette, yes. um, Standard Chartered Bank an advertised wanting an pension administrator, a company to be do a pension administration. Mm -hmm. the, the minute we apply, the minute ICDC we apply to be able to provide service, yes. and after we have, we have, we have applied, the, the, ba the bank quiet goes quiet. That was in 1996. They go quiet completely. Then early, early, early 1997, they advertise in the newspapers a pension manager job. They want a pension manager job. So, so in the beginning, they advertised for, for an administrator. Yes. Now, which, which was an organization. Correct. And then now the next year, they advertised for, for a single, a single person, a person to come in as a pension manager. So Minette was asking, well, what, is the, what, is the, what have they decided to do it in-house? Yes. They don't want to outsource it. So I said, fine. So I, go to, I look at the advert, and I go to my boss and tell my boss, uh, he's called Julius Ngumbi. I tell my boss, Julius, I want to apply for this job. You're joking. Yes. <laughs> you went to your existing yes, boss, my boss and showed him an advert in the paper and said, yes, and this ad, which is in another company, yes, I want to apply for it. I want to apply it. for it. He said, what? I said, yes. He said, no, 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 no. Please don't. You know, first of all, he told me, no, no, Joss will kill us. <laughs> because the previous year, I'd just been awarded the best employee of the year and been promoted to become the uh, qualities, quality assurance manager, you know, you know, this is to do with the uh, 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 quality assurance, you know. So You know, I'm still in shock. I'm trying to understand yeah. how you can walk into your yeah. boss's office and say, I'm applying for a job somewhere else. He was a friend of mine. He was so close. Right. He was so close. We could have a chat. We could have a cup of tea. Right. You know, things like that. In the morning one day, I go to my boss and tell him, look here, you know what? I told you I want to be a consultant. He said, so go on. I said, no, you are retiring this year. Then he said, uh, he said uh, yes, I'm retiring this year. You know, he's a, he's a British guy. So I told him, you know what? I'm thinking, when you retire, I quit. Then we start a consultancy. <laughs> And he said, are you talking to your boss? Do you know you're going to be dismissed? And I told him, I have looked at those options before I came here. I knew that this is one option of getting dismissed. Wow. And that would maybe the only thing that would take me into the consultancy if you don't come along with me. So I, I, he, was, he was close. He was, my, uh, he was my, my, you know, functional line manager. Yeah, he was close. So I know that he was a very close friend to Led Huntington Awari. Then yes. Huntington Huntington was the chairman of the, of the yes. bank's pension fund. Yes, yes. So I used to interact with the late, with the Huntington quite quite a lot. So I go to his house to go deliver papers, and I tell Huntington, you know what? I want to start consultancy, and I would want to do it with Roger the I said, oh, I said yes, but he's, he's not. So I need to talk to him, you know. Uh, and Huntington found a way, and they talked to him. So he calls me one day and tells me, look here, even you have talked to Huntington about this. <laughs> I said, there said are many ways to skill it. I said, Lucha, I, mean, I, I really want <laughs> us to do this. You have so much experience. We need to pass it on to our people here, you know, wow. in retirement benefits. Wow. So he said, go and register the company and let me know you have registered. Yes. So I go to the register chambers and get the company registered, get the, get the name, and the name was Kingsland Court Trust and Benefit Services. You know? I come and show him and says, you have even registered the... I was in the UK in this house, uh, in Shrewsbury. This house was in the uh, Kingsland Court. Uh, so his house, a uh, court was Kingston Court. So he tells me, you have even registered the company in my court, in my house, my court. In I, said, I said, just for you to, you know, uh, really. I mean, I'm serious so and I want you to be part of, to this, be part thing. of this thing. Yes. To be part of this thing. So we get the, we get the company registered. Um, and that was 2000. 
early 2000, maybe mid 2000. So he was supposed to be retiring end this end to end 2000. But nothing in your mind was telling you, okay, mm. now that this guy is retiring in one year, maybe I should take his job. No. That was never ever. In that your was mind. never in my mind. That was never in my mind. Mm. I had I had this passion about giving the service to these guys who really wanted me out there. Got you. You get it. Guys who had provided service to eliminate. You know, really wanted me. There was one guy I, you know, I was t I was telling somebody a story yesterday. You know, there's like one guy who was the most difficult client Lufthansa German Airlines. Uh -huh. Yeah, every time that guy would call me, net anybody, as long as you somebody standing on a phone, you, you know, know, he's, you're he's, talking he's talking to, to Lufthansa, Lufthansa <laughs> German Airlines. Airlines. So he was given to me. Yes. He was that client was given to me, and David Kerry says, "Okay, you handle that client." Yeah, difficult fellows give yes, friends. Okay, handle yeah. that client. So what I did, I looked for a way of meeting him. I would look for a way of meeting him. But he had refused. So one day I told the secretary, I'm coming to deliver documents. Then I walk into the secretary's office with my documents. And the secretary says, do you want to meet him? I said, yes. He said, it is very difficult. I said, no. I just told him there are documents here to be signed. He says, bring them in. So I, I walk in. And I saw, then I tell him, my name is Fred Waswa. He looked at me and said, this small boy. <laughs> <laughs> you are the one. Then he kept going, I said, but you know what? You're the only one who's given me very good service in a minute. And he tells me, so you, you, you want to do your business? You go ahead and do your business. I, I tell him, are you still going to do all, can you wait for me for two years? I said, no, 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 no. I'm going to do my business. I, yeah, I will go on my business. I said, but please, what I need is only a, a, an office. That's it. That's it. He, then he told me, oh, we, we had organized to buy, to buy uh, uh, he bought a house, a bank house. So I, he, I told him, can you give me an office in your house? And he said, no, 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 no. I'll give you a garage. So a garage, a garage. Now. So how to sort, <coughs> you, sort yourself out? Look and at I'm that. gone. So I, that's, I, that's, a how, yes. that's a different level because now mm. you've come from, I'm sure, the corporate, corporate Kenya, you know, with all the trappings, absolutely, the office. Absolutely. Now, Fred, you've yes. decided, now let me start my own thing, Kingsland. Yes. Let me go and put myself in a, garage, in a garage, which is like a corner of a house. Absolutely, absolutely. And you are completely okay with that? I, and I'm, go I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Never you despise know, humble beginnings, guys. Yes, yes. Yes. You know, one of the things is... Uh, I, I always say that when you go to AG's chambers and ask who has registered the most number of companies in this country, they'll tell you Fred Waswa. <laughs> because my first company to register was in 1992, mm -hmm. a company called Katwa Services. You know? Because you know, I, I grew up, I have, I'm the firstborn of an eight, eight, eight uh, children. All of us are wow. eight. That's why the company is called, company is called Octagon. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah? Uh -huh. Eight. We are eight of us. Four boys, I mean six boys and two girls. My my first uh, is a is a boy, is a girl, and the last is a a, a a girl. So I follow my sister, you know. Now it was a challenge because I had to make sure that my brothers go to school. My father died long time ago. My mother was a I simple primary primary teacher. So I was looking for any income that I could be able to get, and I started with the cattle services and was supplying fish to museum to museum of Kenya in 1992. I see. So all this entrepreneurial, it was already there from before. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I did a hotel in uh, Kawangwari. Come on. You know, yes, I did a hotel in Kawangwari. The, okay, many other businesses in between there. But the last business I did before I started now consultancy was I was running a college on Ement House, you know, a oh. computer college on Ement House. So uh, when, I, when I wanted to go out, I said, look here, these things. And you know, when I started a college, I started with one, one computer. The college grew into about 25 computers. I discovered actually you can grow a business. So, <laughs> so by the time you were moving into this garage, yes. you already had uh, some maneuvering. Yes, you knew yes. how to do business development. You knew how to grow business. That's right. That's so for right. you, it was already part it, of it. It was already part of part of me because okay. we do supply. Sometimes you get a tender. I remember I did. I got a tender from from Kenatko and I supplied uh, stationery. Up to date, they have never paid me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> story of our lives. Yes, story of our lives, I tell you. Entrepreneurship is not the easiest thing. Yes. So I, I, I decided to make up the courage. So, so of course, now, he, him, he decides in January, he flies off to, to Sierra Leone in yes. January 2001. Yeah. So now I started planning to resign. And in about uh, February, I go to my HR director's office. Yeah. And tell him, look here, I want to resign. The, the, it was a nation, it's called Chandru, Chand, it's called Chandraska, yeah? <laughs> Pingali. I told him, Chandru, I want to, I want to resign. He said, what? Resign? He said, yes. Uh, he said, is there something that we haven't, we have not yes. done for you? I said, no, <coughs> I, I, I am comfortable. I've fun, had a fantastic uh, career in this bank. You have trained me a lot, and I think I can be able to provide service out there. So he said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do business. He said, Fred, business in this environment, you know, 
2001, we're getting towards the 2002 elections. Uh -huh. You get the, course, yes, the, yes. the Moi elections the change, and the change yeah. of year. So the country, the economy was, ra was running at even negative one. So it was crazy. So he told me that, that in the kind of economy you're going to run a business, he told me you must be stupid, Fred. You are leaving an international bank. Yeah. You know, it, you, you told me about the story of how when, when you quit Minet, yes. someone was telling you, how are you going to survive? How are you going to... You know, they're always naysayers telling you, you can't do you it, can't you, do can't it. you can't make it, it. you can't. Absolutely. How, how, Absolutely. How do you overcome that? How do you overcome people telling you, no, you, you the, look at the economy, look at this situation? And many people, it enters their head. Yes, yes. And then they get discouraged. Yeah. No, one thing, one thing is that you must have a strong inner will. Okay, not, uh, uh, let's not call it the stupidity, but yes. I want to see this thing that you <laughs> created because yes, yes. obviously you've spoken about how now you've, 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 you've left a big international bank Correct. to start Kingsland from a garage. Yes. Is there any way that I can see what this new business of yours looks like now today? Tell me about how you changed from Kingsland to uh, Octagon. Octagon. Yes. Now, um, you know, I, I, when I started Kingsland in 2001, mm -hmm. we, uh, my boss was away for two years. So he came back in 2003. And we ran the business. And at that time, I had grown the, had grown the clans. I remember, I remember in 2001, mm -hmm. uh, when I left the bank, the bank didn't want to replace me in the bank. You know? And they asked me whether I can do the job outside. Oh, it's so fantastic. I said, yeah, I can do this an outside service. So uh, they gave me a contract. For the job I was doing, I got a contract. Yeah, so it became a it became a service became a service provider. So now the bank was your client. Yes, so now the bank became my client. Look at that. You get it. So Amazing. two days a week I was working for the bank. Three days I was working for myself. Talk about having your cake and eating it. <laughs> Amazing. So June, July, August, September, December, I had one client called Standard Chartered. In December, Roger comes back from from Sierra Leone and tells me, "Look here, if you have the same client in June, I'm not going to be ashamed running a business with one cl client." We'll close the, the company and wind it up and I will get you for your, your job in the bank. It hit me like a boom. I went for Christmas home and I came back in January, February. A call comes and I get a client. I get a client. It's US Embassy. The US Embassy wants a job on. done, a job done. And the job, the job to them, they have looked for a solution for three months. They're going to get a solution. They ask me to look at it. I look for it. I look at the, the thing for about three, four days. I get this. I get the solution. I think maybe I think maybe I'm wrong. I again look at it. Again, I go back to the same solution. And I call them. I said, "I've got what you are looking for." So she comes. I explain to her. First of all, you know, she came to my office. That garage. I had one desk, one chair, uh, two chairs. One chair this way. The other chair. And this is the U.S. embassy. U.S. embassy. Yes, HR officer, U.S. embassy plus her husband. So she, now she tells me, "Oh, this is your office." I said, "Yes." She says, "When did you start?" I said, "We started about six months ago. You know, uh, we're just setting up." And uh, we said, "So, can you go to do this work?" I said, "Yes." How long? So I explained to her how long I've been in pension industry and things like that. She said, "We have this problem." I said, "Can you do it?" I said, "I can do it." And she tells me how much, and I, I tell her, I said, 300, 400,000 Kenyan shillings. And she writes me an email, I said, look here, I need you to do it right. This is the terms of reference. Tell me exactly how much you, you charge. So the friend who introduced me, I called him. He's called Jonathan Stridgebury. I called him, and Jonathan tells me, no, no, they think in dollars. Don't quote in Kenya shillings. <laughs> think in dollars. So I said, no, I need a client. It's, 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 this client is between me and closure of this business. Because Roger, when he comes back in June, he'll close the business. So I told Jonathan, I told Jonathan, I said, no, quote the right figure. So I go back and say 800,000 Kenyan shillings. She says, okay, fine. If you do it right within the two weeks that we have agreed, I'll pay you 800. But if you exceed my expectations, I'll give you 2.8 million shillings. She tells me, can you come to US Embassy in the evening and do what? Put, I will put you on the screen for Washington. We explain to Washington. So I go to the US Embassy in the evening. They put on the screen. I explain to them. The guy in the screen says, ah, young man has got it. Then when you finish, she tells me, get, go and get me an invoice of your 2.8 million shillings. Hey! <laughs> and, and, and you know what? You know what? I go to my boss <laughs> in the bank. I go to my boss in the bank. I tell him, Chandru, I got a job, <laughs> which I did in three days. They got 2.8 million shillings. You can't be serious. Forget it, you are lying. I tell him, look here, this is the invoice. Tells me, Freddie, go away. You know, every time Chandru will come back now, he left, he left, he left the bank. Every time Chandru will come back from, <laughs> from India, he, he, he always looks for me and says, can we have, can we have, a, can we have, la? yeah. can we have lunch? There's something, yes. there's something good here with this guy. This guy is a foolish man. This guy is a foolish man. 
So that is incredible. Then, then from there, the business basically that picked is, up. This story of yours can go on forever. I guess. But I want us to go and see the story where it's actually happening. Okay. okay. Do you mind if we head to your office? Absolutely. Check it out? Absolutely. Welcome so much to Octagon Beautiful. Africa. Beautiful. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, right. Wenezi. It's I'll a pleasure for having, having, having you today. All right. Okay. Asante sana. Thanks. Welcome. So we're, this is West Park uh, building, yeah? Uh, West Park Suits. West Park Suits yes, in Parklands. Yes, of, of West Park. Okay. Uh, in, in Parklands, Ojijo Road. Uh, this is the Institute of Pension Management. This is a part of the business. This is part of the business. So you've got four elements. We, ha we have four, four elements in our business. Okay. We have pension, we have mm -hmm. insurance, we have property, and we have training. We aim to be in, in eight countries yes. in my 2022. We also would like to be in uh, five counties. Locally? Oh, locally. Yes, locally, five counties. We would like to get into Nyeri and Eldred. Those are very, very vibrant, very fast-growing counties, and we would like to basically position there for small, medium enterprises. Well, I'm sure with what you've got going on here and the kind of dedication and commitment that you have, you will certainly accomplish that. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so yes, grateful yes, that you've yes. taken the time for showing me around. It's a pleasure. Let yes. me release yes. you so that you can continue with the wonderful business of serving Kenyans. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming, thank you. Manesi. All right. It's a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. So, thank, thank you. So and Kaributena. Uh, Asante. Uh, All right. Okay, thanks. A strong belief in God and a love for numbers. If you're the mathematical kind, maybe a career in pension management is for you. Thank you so much for watching Top Job with me, Wanesi Musalia. That was a great interview with Fred Waswa, the managing director and founder of Octagon Pension Africa Limited. Remember, it's all about power moves only.